Hello my soccer universe. Trying to sit a little bit higher for my videos. Uh, let's see whether this experiment will work. As I'm shooting this video I have not yet an idea about the title but there are four things that pop to my mind that I want to talk up front uh, and then one of these will be the title of the video depending on what thumbnail, uh, what picture I can find to make it uh, nice. Let's start at home in Austria. I think the Austrian teams acquitted themselves all right. We have an unbeaten week. Salzburg, of course, won one against Milan. Um, Austria Vienna, I was actually positively surprised in the Conference League. They made a, a nil nil against Hapoel Beersheba and probably should have even won it. So maybe a little bit, uh, um, you know, also a slight sour note there. And Sturm Graz, you see them. They are actually one of, of the teams that I have. They are among the biggest winners, beating mid Jutland at home. Deservedly so, and it probably should have been even a higher scoreline. So uh, that's definitely a, a good start to the European season for the Austrian teams, which I didn't necessarily expect. Bum note, next. Uh, we had a riot, more or less, uh, in Nice, where the Cologne fans, it, who come in droves, and they unfortunately have some elements that are rather rough, and they already... Uh, caused some, I don't want to say damage to the to, 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 to city, but they left quite a mess and then they attacked the Nice block and then the Nice block attacked them and the entire game needed to be postponed and uh, there was news that uh, first it was a Cologne fan who fell down from uh, the second tier, it turns out it was a Parisian uh, with, with, with just ugly scenes, absolutely ugly and yes, it was great to see the two uh, fan blocks are rather filled and you know it's good to have um, a good atmosphere there but being that Köln is one of the teams that I really like in Germany and I actually even like the city quite some uh, this is something that I don't want to see and this gives uh, this puts the club in quite some disrepute uh, especially when you can't consider the Frankfurt fans are equally traveling in droves and there is no such violence going on but it's unfortunately not the first time that I hear about this element uh, in, around Köln so yeah that uh, always makes me a little bit uh, sad to see those scenes and uh, should not happen at all um, Lazio saved a uh, otherwise horrible evening for the Italian teams. I mean, Fiorentina at home uh, against uh, RFS from Riga, only a 1-1 with an Austrian having a decisive foot in there, despite having enough chances to uh, get the win, is not a good sign at all. And Roma, yeah, they had the chances. They, it was a tight, tight game, but uh, at Lut Ludogorets, you better win, you don't lose. And already you find yourself in a not so easy group, a little bit on the back foot. And it also confirms my suspicion that Roma, for all the hype that was there before the season, um, they, are, they have still some work to do. On the flip side, remember last season the Conference League, Roma started out really, really badly. So it does not mean that every, everything is done and dusted, but it's not a, a really good start at all. Lazio, on the other hand... Um, really were impressive against Feyenoord, especially in the first half. Uh, they could have led even by more. However, they almost threw it away as well. I mean, the game ended 4-2, it was 4-0, and Feyenoord scored a 4-3 that was then not given for offside, but that could, could have gone way worse. And then I guess, and this is the biggest news beyond the field, is of course the Queen's passing, I think, had an impact as well. Um, also on the... Um, uh, on the English teams, I mean, you saw it, I mean, it was halfway through the Zurich game that the Queen's passing was uh, was become known and they had a minute of silence before the start of the second half, which is something I've never seen before. Um, of course, I, I, I think there was even a minute of silence in Graz uh, for that. Um, in the game, uh, the game. So this was really, really big news. Um, it did not affect Arsenal, but I felt that the mood at Old Trafford was rather somber and then the game did not help as well. So it was a so-and-so evening for the British team. Spanish teams did quite well, 
I also think French teams. I'm wearing Monaco. I actually decided, given the Queen's passing, a black shirt is in order. And there's a crown on there as well. So kind of, I thought it is fitting and Monaco also did well. So it was a horrible evening, I think, for Italian teams. It was good for Spanish teams, all three of them winning. And Real Sociedad definitely not the expect. And also all French or all league earned teams, because Monaco is not a French team. Also all of them winning. So uh, for them... It was actually quite good. Another nation had a, a atrocious evening were the Netherlands. Um, yeah, similar record as the Italians. Uh, it, <laughs> uh, there were some blunders in there and we'll talk about them. So yeah, so much for the, for the preamble. I would say we have loads of matches to cover. I mean, I saw only a quarter of them kind of live in this conference where they switch back and forth. Um, and then I saw this morning all the highlights and now I'm shooting this video. So, uh, yeah, quite some work there. Not a lot of sleep as well. Um, but what do you do for your passions? We'll start out. PSV 1-1 one, one against Bode Klimt. This goes right into the Dutch. Navy. I mean, PSV had ample of chances. However, Bode took a lead through a really great goal by Grönbeck. And then a second half completely uh, settles down and Kakpo gets on an equalizer. But that's definitely points drop for PSV in a tricky group. Because Arsenal actually had a word the dominant team. And uh, yes, respect for, uh, uh, for them even with a second string team going there and winning. Although I'm always a little, little bit bugged. It was the Nketiah show in many ways. Because he, he assisted Marquinhos for the 1-0. He was crucial in the penalty uh, that, that that was given to Zurich. The game actually had to be played in St. Gallen because of the IAF meeting in Zurich. And I don't get it quite. Why does UEFA then schedule the Zurich game right there? But okay. Uh, he makes it 1-1 before the half. Then, as I said, we had the Queen's passing, the minute of silence. And what I was wondering, how did they get the black band so quickly? Is there such a set at every stadium, just in case? Or did they already were in the know and had them with her? That's something that interests me. If, uh, tell me if you know. And then Marquinhos assists in Katia to make it 2-1. Two, uh, two and Arsenal can play it relatively easy. Home, take an early lead in that group. Uh, Ren, late winner. And that is a theme with French teams. Uh, they took the uh, lead through TAT, but uh, San Giorgio uh, gets an equalizer shortly thereafter, despite Ren having more of, of the game. And as I said, in the end, Asinio gives them with a really, really great goal. Uh, the way he shoots is, is, is just odd. Uh, gives them uh, the win. Fenerbahce against Dynamo Kiev. They played already in a Champions League qualification against Tikkenscher. So they meet again. Um, a game dom largely dominated by Fenerbahce, although it was only 1-1 one, one at the half. And again, a very late winner through Michi Bacuay. Yeah, we know that guy uh, for sure. So also, uh, that will be an interesting group as well. Uh, <laughs> Betis wins by the same score as Lusk did a year ago in Helsinki. 2-0, uh, William Jose scoring both goals. Uh, yes, a goal for Helsinki was disallowed, but you know. Uh, it was all expected. Everything but expected was Roma. We already talked a little bit. Uh, Kali gives uh, Ludogorets a late uh, uh, lead in the 72nd. Then Shomodurov seemingly saves the point f uh, for Roma, but two minutes later, Nonato makes it 2-1 uh, it's just you cannot have this especially as an Italian team if you get the draw you have to stick with it with, with the draw so a huge upset and a big big letdown for Roma who find themselves already in trouble Braga rather uh, you know easy over Malmö they had even two goals disallowed for offside uh, and then of course I'll go uh, Guy Orta scores regularly my other positive surprise of the evening uh, was that Union Berlin could play in their home stadium. Yes, UEFA are finally allowing standing room. And gotta say, glorious at the atmosphere there. Unfortunately, the team was not up for it because uh, Union saint were the better team and Linen gives them a win and then very late, late on uh, as even a red card. It was, well, was a stop-stop stop, stop time given. So yeah, uh, kind of a bum note in that uh, for Union Berlin, their first real downer of the season. Um, 
because in the Bundesliga they are flying. So a bit of a su uh, surprise. Surprise also that uh, Sociedad won at Manchester United. Uh, that was the one game that the Austrian um, uh, TV decided, yeah, we'll show the pregame because of the minute of silence and I could totally understand that. I think the somber mood transferred onto the pitch because the game was not good and yes, United were playing a second string lineup when Ronaldo and Maguire are starting. You see, this is almost the United that we saw at the beginning of the season. So again, indication that it should not be. I think the most outstanding scene was Ronaldo running on goal and not making it. That is something uh, one has to get, get used to. And of course, the really controversial penalty. Uh, I don't know why VAR decided to stick with it on, the, on, on that one, because it clearly hits Lisandro Martinez first on the uh, thigh and then on, on the arm. And it's a very natural movement that he's doing. He's not going out to block the ball or whatever. So I found this was a... Yeah, I can see maybe by the letter of the law why it is given, but nah. Bryce Mendes scores in the 59th, which actually uh, made the game a little bit more lively. But in the end, uh, Real Sociedad, who actually I really like the dark jerseys, uh, played it home safely. Sheriff, uh, easy win over Omonia. Um, Sturm Graz, as I said, uh, this was a rather positive point, especially in the first half against Midtjylland with Omega giving them a lead with, uh, after a wonderfully played uh, attacking move, uh, going to the left out directly in and then Omega can get it in. And at that point, at 8 minutes, this was already served, Omega also hits the crossbar. Then uh, a penalty is given that, Hor that Horvath sees safe, safe, so uh, it should have been at least two for Sturm at that point. Second half was then a little bit more nervy, and especially uh, once Hillander got uh, sand off for a second yellow. Uh, they had three captains in that game, Sturm, uh, but in the end they played it home and got a deserved win. I honestly think you got a rule that the scoreline was not higher, because Sturm was definitely the better team. Makes me quite positive in a very difficult group that Lazio is already in control uh, of. I mean, how they rolled over Feyenoord, despite I actually really like those Feyenoord away jer uh, jerseys. Uh, I have, have said the black with the pink looks actually really good. Not necessarily Feyenoord, but it looks really good, I gotta say. Um, my wife immediately said, oh, I like those. Two. Will you buy one for me? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Luis Alberto, Felipe Anderson, already after 50 minutes and Vecino 28. As I said, it could have been uh, even more at the half. Vecino makes it then in the 63rd, 4 nil. And I think then Lazio pulled it a gear back. Jimenez pulls one back in the 69th. Then he also makes one in the 88th. And then they get another goal, which is disallowed. But I had the feeling that very late on this could have turned. Freiburg. I'm not sure if this was the Europa League. They were probably Europa League. But I think they already played in the UEFA Cup. Uh, take an early 2-0 lead through Grifo and Rizzo Doan. Fully deserved. Uh, but Vazovic uh, scores one for Karabakh and then it got nervy and there were some chances uh, for Karabakh. But Fre Freiburg hang on. Uh, not uh, against, I don't want to say group favorites, but I would have said uh, Ol Olympiakos is probably um, on balance, probably more favored or, uh, in that group than no, no, that They take a lead, however, uh, concede a stupid own goal because Lafont uh, <laughs> runs past the ball. Um, so uh, it's a Mutusami own goal. And then, but very late, late on, Gesson gives not the win. Monaco against Javenas Vesta was one of those games where you actually think that Monaco has maybe a little bit more of the game, but there was just more energy coming from Javenas Vesta, who actually had probably the better chances. Uh, the game was not the greatest. Uh, it is this a Bolo penalty? Then uh, would have been almost given a sec second one, but there was a great tackle by Dragovic in there as well. So yeah, um, the one nil for Monaco probably just about right, but I think a draw would have probably a bit better. And then Ferenc Varos against Trabzonspor was an absolutely crazy game. Um, Ferenc Varos had a two nil lead and were a man down by the 29th minute. So they scored a second goal already with a man down. Then Trapson comes back, Gomez uh, in the 39th pulls one back and you think maybe the tables can turn, but just before the half there's a penalty that is converted. 
Second half, it's all traps on. Uh, they get a 3 2. They even get an equalizer. Brilliant shot by Yaziki. However, it's uh, called off, rightly so, for offside. With that, we have the following standings. You know, I give it to you all. I think most interesting, of course, are the different bars. You see Union saint Julien and uh, Ludogorets uh, in groups uh, C and D are the other are are big winners. Uh, overall, uh, but you know, there are others like Sheriff and Real Sociedad that also uh, have quite positive performances. Um, as for the favorites, it's still Arsenal, but there has been quite some movement. It's now the Spanish <laughs> Armada is coming up, uh, Real Sociedad, uh, Betis, Monaco and Rennes also moving up as to Lazio. Various, you know, teams that lost early uh, moving down. Still, at this moment, very much Arsenal's to... Uh, I don't want to say Arsenal's to lose because uh, it's 11% only, but Arsenal look like uh, a team to look out for. Uh, upcoming games are here. I actually think the Feyenoord Sturm will be an uh, interesting one because that could actually decide whether Sturm can actually do a little, a little bit more there. But other than that, Olympiakos against Freiburg uh, is on the first part. Then, of course, Arsenal against PSV. It's actually all, all, almost... Um, a must suit for PSV to get a point in that one. Uh, and then uh, Betis against Ludogorets and Prague against uh, Union Berlin, maybe. But you know, the way Union Berlin were, uh, it's, it's an interesting set, but it's not the greatest set of fixtures. Conference League. Uh, I already said Fiorentina, despite all the possession, only a 1-1. One, one, and Bruno Friesenbichler, former Sturm Graz player, assists the equalizer through Illich. Uh, Barak getting the go-ahead for Fior Fiorentina. Hearts losing at home to Bajakse here. Big. Also not a good week for Scot Scottish teams. All of them getting a rather big beatdown. Anderlecht, a 1 0 over Silkeborg. West Ham were down at the half to Stauer. Yes, let's call them Stauer, not FSCB. I know there's some legal issues there, but it's Stauer Bucharest. But then a, a brilliant bone penalty, Emerson and Antonio make it a proper game, but it all came uh, 69th minute and after. So they had, had to work hard. Uh, as I said, Austria Vienna had actually more chances, uh, hit the crossbar, but so did Hapel Bersheva. So that was actually quite positive from my point of view. The one thing is, of course, Le 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 Don, uh player runs free for a goal and is still caught, cannot even take a shot. That is maybe the one thing where it shows um, that there's a little bit missing. Uh, Via Real against Lech Posen. I mean, <laughs> I have been slamming a little bit the English team. No, not really, but you know, it always works if you play a second string squad in the, in the European competition. I do understand it. I just don't like it. Let's put it that way. Villarreal played 11 players that did not play on the weekend. Completely new squad. Some of them have not even played for Villarreal ever. And they duly found themselves down to Lech Posen. Poznan. I should probably say Poznan. However, uh, they have done crazy 10 minutes where Chukwese and, and uh, Baena score um, three goals. And it's 3-1 at the half. And you think, wow. The gamble played off for, uh, via, uh, for Villarreal. However, Ishak then puts two back for the 7th and 62nd. It's 3-3. Three, three. And then, you know, he pulled on Dani Parejo, Kike and Gerard Moreno. Then Pino comes on. So, you know, all the big guns are slowly coming on. And very late on, uh, Cochlear makes it 4-3 for Villarreal. Most goals in any game uh, this that evening. It was entertaining, although it might not, 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 have, not have been great, especially since Villarreal played only a second string squad. Uh, or I said Nice against Cologne. The only other thing I want to say is that it was two completely different halves. First half, it was all Cologne with Tigas uh, giving the go-ahead, had had goal. Uh, and I think there was even a crossbar hit. And then the second half, it was all Nice. I mean, literally, uh, when the law equalized, I thought that Nice is going to win this even. Uh, it was all going to the left side, this game. Very odd game, and it did not help uh, with all the nasty circumstances around it. Uh, Slovats go against Partizan, another crazy, crazy, crazy game. Um, Slovats go enjoying a 2 0 lead uh, by the 19th minute, all Kalabiska, and then uh, Belic gets sent off for Partizan for a rough tackle. And you think, yeah, this is gonna go easy for Slovats go. However, in the second half, Diapate. Equalizes and then Gomez in the 60 second gives them even the lead. So it, within a matter of 15 minutes, 
and a man down partisan had turned it around completely. Ivar Kozak gets uh, the, the equalizer for Slovatsko and uh, it ends in a 3-3 draw. And that's all the exciting games that were happening because for the rest, honestly, there's not much. There's a bunch of nil-nils. We had AZ winning at Dnipro, which was played in, um, I think, uh, Trnava uh, in Slovakia. So that was interesting. Uh, Vaduz at the group stage debut with a goal less draw. Uh, but other than that, there is really not much. And Kluge get a late equalizer. Sieversburg and Slavia is probably the best game there. Basel actually found, uh, uh, had 1-0 and was 1-1, but get a 3-1 uh, lead. But really not much that we can talk about there. Uh, that was the bad part. And uh, if I look at the groups, these, the first batch is probably the A to D is the better batch than the, the latter one. And we see it in the standings here. I mean, it does not really say much, but you know, maybe the probabilities are of in interest. Of course, Bashakshi here and RFS uh, are doing well. Um, as do, of course, AZ getting an important away win, but you know, not much has changed overall. Uh, well, there have been a few few changes. I mean, you saw it maybe already in the Europa League favorites. There were a few Champions League teams coming in. There are also quite a few Europa League teams coming in. However, it's Villarreal, 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 and then it's West Ham. And you see where West Ham is as much favorite in the Conference League as Arsenal is in the Europa League. Villarreal, that's quite big. They seem to be the strongest team in there if they can play even second string squad. But you know, might all change along along the way. Uh, Cologne or Kern doing actually quite well as well. And you know, I'd say this at least one um, Dutch team that got a win. Uh, the next set of fixtures, uh, I put them all out there. Uh, you know, here the bad batch is to the left. <laughs> the other one is to the right. I think actually if you have Fiorentina, is definitely one uh, to look forward to. West Ham going back to Denmark. Um, Hapoel Bersheva against Villarreal. And I would say Partizan Nice. That could be a hot match too. So yeah, that was it from the Europa League and the Europa Conference League. As always, I enjoyed those evenings a whole lot because you see many games, you see many goals, and there's usually a lot of story uh, uh, storylines. So I really wish it would get a lot more uh, attention than it currently does. In any case, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Please drop a line below if you want to add something to it. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!